Welcome to Naresha Technologies. My name is Mahesh. I'm taking Android and Java Technologies training in Naresha IT. Okay. So, in my last previous videos, I explained. So, what is Android? I explained and why Android? I explained. Okay. So, in this session, I'll explain you what are the components of Android. So, I'll explain you what are the components of Android. Some people call as it's Android components. Okay. Some people call it's a building blocks. Okay. So, mainly the complete Android application development depends on four components. The four components are nothing but one is activity is one component, activity, service, the broadcast receiver and content provider. These are the four components of Android. The complete Android application development depends on these four components, activity, service, broadcast receiver and content provider. Okay. So, if you know these four components, if you know, so probably you can say I know Android application development. Okay. Let us see individually what exactly each component. Okay. So, let us see the first one. What is the first component? Activity. Activity is the first component. So, what is meant by activity? Activity means nothing but a single screen in the application. Activity means a single screen in the application with UI components. User will interact with the device through activity. A single screen in the application with UI components, user will interact with the device through what? activity. Each and every screen in Android is called as what? One activity. Let us see here for example, let us take uh, this is my phone preview. This is my phone preview. Okay. So, each and every screen is called as what? One activity we will call. For example, can I say this is an activity? Yes, it is an activity. Okay. It is an activity with some different UI components like these are the buttons. Each and every screen in Android is called as what? One activity. Mainly, okay, let us take here open this play store application I opened, the play store application. This is nothing but one activity, a single screen in the application with different UI components, with different UI components. So, mainly in this activity, we will learn how to design the screen with different UI components. Let us take, so these are the buttons, top charts, games and these are the buttons, it is a tab, app and games entertainment is a tabs. Okay. So, this is a navigable slider. So, once if you select this one, you will get a slider you will get. So, all these things are nothing but the UI components. So, mainly in this activity, we will learn how to design the screen with the different UI components we will learn in the activity part. Okay. Just I will recall once again, a single screen in the application with UI components. So, user will interact with the device through with this activity component. Definitely if user, we had to provide an interface we had to provide to the user to communicate with your application. So, that UI designing part will work on this activity component. Okay. The second component is nothing but service. Service means a long running background process without any user interaction. A long running background process without any user interaction is called as what? Service. With user interaction we called as activity. Without any user interaction, if you want to perform any operations, if you want to perform in the background, so that logic will write in the service will write that logic. Let us take best example, uh, alarm. Let us take I want to wake up in the early morning at 5 o'clock. Okay, let us take simply we will put an alarm we will put. So, let us take time is 5 that is it. You don't need to check continuous whether time is 5 or not, time is 5 or not, time is 5 or not. Continuous you don't need to check. See once if you are checking like that, you don't need, you don't need to set an alarm first of all, correct or not. So, once if you set an alarm automatically whenever the time is 5, automatically it is going to give the information to you. Okay, That is one best example for service, alarm service. Meaning you don't need to check continuously in the background. So, automatically we will we'll write that logic in service, we will write that logic. The service is going to check continuously in the background. Let us take another best example. Let us take in my phone, Wi-Fi is in an enabled state. You know, sometimes when I am when I'm going in my device, I will get some notifications I will get in my phone like open Wi-Fi network is available. See, I am not interacting with my, with my phone. Is there any Wi-Fi network is available? Whenever the Wi-Fi device is available, automatically that will give the information to your phone. Meaning, we are not checking continuously in the background. We will write that logic in service. We will write that logic. The service is going to check continuously in the background for the Wi-Fi devices. Operations, if you want to perform in the background without any user interaction, we will write that logic. We will write in service. We will write that logic. Okay. The best example for service is nothing but, let us take alarm service, alarm service. Next, media player. Media player is also one of the best example service. And you can start playing an audio file and you can close the media player application the back end it will play the audio file. So, media player, FM player like you can you can you can give a lot of examples you can give for this service. If you want to perform any actions, if you want to perform in the background, 
okay we will write that logic in service we will write that logic. So here again the services means either you can create your own service you can create you can create your own background process you can create or you can access any uh, built in services you can access like notification service, a Wi Fi service, Bluetooth service, sensor service. Okay. So, all these are these are the built in services you can create your own service you can create or you can access what any one of the built in services we can access. This is the second component. Third component is nothing but third component is what broadcast receiver. What is in the broadcast receiver? So, broadcast receivers are registered for system announcements. Let us take broadcast receivers, broadcast receivers are registered for broadcast receivers are registered for what system announcements. If you want to get any system announcements, if you want to get then we will configure the broadcast receiver, we will configure what kind of system events. Let us see here, let us see what kind of system events you can get. Imagine this is the device, this is my device, so this is called as a notification bar. In the header part is called as a notification bar. Whenever you connect a headset, whenever you connect a headset on top of device notification bar, immediately it is going to display this headset symbol, it will display. Every time, every time you will not get this headset symbol. When you will get this one? Whenever user connect a headset, then at that time immediately you will get this headset symbol you will get in the device. My question is how your phone will recognize user is connected a headset that is why display this symbol. Let us take another best example, this is a default charger symbol whenever you connect a charger immediately it is going to change the symbol like this, immediately it is going to change the symbol like this. My question is how your phone will recognize user is connected a charger that is why display this symbol, charger connected symbol. If battery is low it will display with the red mark it will display, if battery is completely dead if battery is low it will display with the red mark, if battery is completely dead it will display with N2 mark it will display. So, how your phone will recognize all these things, user connected a bat charger, user is disconnected a charger, battery low battery is completely dead, your phone is rebooting. So, another best example, let us take this is my phone, let us take what I am doing is I am setting this power button I am selecting, this is my phone preview, okay. I am setting power button I am selecting. Once if you select a power button, screen will off, how the phone will recognize user is selected a power button that is why off the screen. Again if you select the power button, screen will on. See now the screen is on, it is showing this pattern lock, meaning how this, this is also an application, this pattern lock is also an application. How this pattern lock application knows that a user is user device is off and user device is on that is why display this symbol. So, these kind of events if you want to get, so we use what broadcast receiver concept to use. Broadcast receivers are registered for system announcements like if you want to get any uh, system announcements like headset plugin, power connected, disconnected, screen on, screen off, user is making a call, user is receiving a call, user is sending an SMS, user is receiving an SMS. If you want to get these kind of events, if you want to get then we use what broadcast receiver we use, okay. So, we use what broadcast receiver, okay. Example for this broadcast receiver is headset plugin, charger connected or charger disconnected, screen on or screen off, screen on or screen off, user is making a call, receiving a call, sending an SMS, receiving an SMS, okay. So, all these things are the best example for what broadcast receivers, okay. So, next the last component here is nothing but content provider. Content provider is used to share the data between multiple applications. If you want to share the data, if you want to share from one application to another application. So, if you want to explain briefly about this content provider, explain what exactly content provider means. Imagine in my phone there are two applications are there. Let us take the application name is X application I am taking. In my phone there is an application called what X application, okay and one more application called Y application. In my phone there are two applications are there, one is X application and one more thing is Y application. Imagine this X application is stored some data in the database. We already discussed what is a database in Android? Database in Android is SQLite is a database in Android. Imagine this X application is stored some data in the database. X application is stored some data in the database, SQLite database. So, who created this, who created this database? Only X application only created this database. For example, if Y application wants to access the data, if Y application wants to access this X applications data, it is not possible in Android. Directly this communication is not possible. We cannot access the other applications data, we cannot access into our application, we cannot access. One of the security feature in Android is the data is stored by this application, only this application only can access the data. 
other applications cannot access this X applications data. Then okay, let us take real time, a real time example. Let us take this application as contacts I will take. This is one more application called call lock, contacts, call lock. Let us see here, contacts is a separate application. This application is stored some data in the contacts database. Here there is an application called WhatsApp. In WhatsApp, can we access the contacts data or not? Yes, we are accessing. We are able to access this contacts data in WhatsApp. And here there is an application called call log and here there is an application called true caller. In true caller, we can access this call log data, we can access in true caller application, we can access. See how these applications are accessing, how WhatsApp is accessing the contacts data and how the true caller application is accessing the call log information. See directly it is not possible, directly it is not possible to access the other applications data into our application. But if the application itself is giving a permission, if the application itself is giving a permission to your application, so then we can access the data. Meaning these applications are providing the permissions to access the data. Providing a permission is nothing but these applications will provide what? Content to provider. That is why these applications data we can access in other applications we can access. Directly we cannot access in other applications we cannot access the applications data. But if the application is providing content provider then we can access the data we can access in other applications we can access the data. Okay, That is a content provider. Just I will tell you the definition again. In Android, one of the security feature is we cannot access the other applications data we cannot access in our application directly. But if the application is providing content provider, then we can access the data we can access in our application. That providing permissions, providing permissions to your data to access other applications. So that concept is called as what? Content provider. So in Android, there are some few applications are there. So these applications are providing what? Content provider. Let us see, I will give a complete description here. In Android, one of the security feature is what? We cannot access, we cannot access the other applications data into our application directly. But if the application is providing content provider, then we can access the data into our, in Android. So following built-in applications are providing, following built-in applications are providing content provider. Let us see what are the applications. Applications are nothing but one is contacts is an application, call log is another application, media is another application, settings application, calendar application. These applications are providing what? Content provider. That is why we can access these applications data, we can access in another applications we can access. Directly it is not possible, but if the application is providing content provider, then we can access the data, we can access in other applications, we can access the data. Okay, this is what the content provider. Okay, these are the four major concepts of Android, the main components of what? Android. But okay, having the knowledge on these four components, we can build some applications, but you cannot build a real time applications, you cannot build with these concepts. To say frankly, to say frankly, we cannot build the real time applications, you cannot build with these concepts. Okay, so be, these are the core components, basic components like user interface, background process, system announcements, database and all. But if you want to develop a real time projects, if you want to develop apart from these four concepts, activity, service, broadcast receiver and content provider, you need to have a knowledge on few other topics also you need to have a knowledge. Just I list out here what are the other topics are required for developing a real time applications. So one of the mandatory thing we required for a mobile application developers is nothing but you need to have a knowledge on the web services. Let us say there are two types of web services are there, SOAP and REST. Before going to directly jump into this web services concept, so first of all you, have, you need some basic knowledge on what is this XML and JSON, okay. Web services, XML, JSON, okay. Next retrofit, material design, again material design there are some a lot of uh, advanced UI components you can find in the material design like recycler view, card view, skittle menu, okay. Uh, toolbar, okay, navigable navigation view, like these kind of advanced UI components you can get inside this material design. And another important concept in nowadays in the present market, one of the most most advanced advanced concept is nothing but Firebase, Android Firebase. We require a knowledge on Google Maps because another common requirement in the application is nothing but displaying the maps, Google Maps, and you require a knowledge on Google Places, Google Cloud Messaging. So graphics programming, there is a framework for displaying the graphics like we are having different frameworks like uh, one of the framework is nothing but Cocos 2D is one framework, 
Cocoa Studio is one framework for displaying the graphics or if you want to display 3D graphics uh, we are having a frameworks like Unity 3D, UDK these are the frameworks. And so one more concept here is nothing but a JSON. Meaning apart from the four components activity, service, broadcast receiver and content provider these are the basic core components but having the knowledge on these four components is not enough to build the applications. Apart from these concepts you need to have a knowledge on these topics you need to have a knowledge this XML, JSON, retrofit, material design, JSON. So these are the 12 topics are required. I will explain about each and every topic why you require web services in Android, why you require this retrofit in Android. I will explain about each and every topic in the next video I will explain you. Okay. So thank you. Mm -hmm.